Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk About Clutter. I'm your host, Margot Statton, a professional organizer specializing in chronic clutter. And today we're going to be talking about simple strategies of how you all can declutter smarter, not harder. If you're somebody who's been accruing clutter for the last 10 to 30 years, it's kind of unrealistic to expect it to all be gone in a month. I know that every single one of us wants the clutter out of our homes as quickly as possible. But unless you're planning to literally move out of your house, um, you're going to have to put in some work. (laughs) But there are ways to kind of be more chaotic and have it be more time consuming. And then there are simple strategies that you can do where you are actually decluttering smarter and faster and you're not wasting so much time and energy. So let's jump into five tips that will have your home looking clutter free in no time minus the back pain. When I first started my decluttering journey about seven years ago, I didn't even know that decluttering was a thing. I was just like, I have way too much stuff and I need to get rid of it all. I literally purged random items all over my house. A nail polish here, some papers over there, maybe a drawer in the kitchen. I was doing stuff. I was getting rid of things, the garbage bags and donation boxes were filling, but I couldn't understand why my home still looked like a hot mess. I realized that it was the way I was decluttering was definitely not the smartest way to go about it. And what ended up happening is I had zero systems. There was no schedule and I was participating in something I called sporadic and disorganized decluttering. And maybe you can relate to that. I don't recommend it. (laughs) Sporadic uh, decluttering does not work. So all that changed when I actually sat down and created a to-do list. What room am I starting with? Which drawer? How many times a week am I going to dedicate to decluttering? What am I doing on days that I am not decluttering for 30 minutes? So once I created a decluttering to-do list, I was able to not only declutter faster, be more focused, but I actually started to see tangible results. A little here, a little there, a little all over the place leads to very little progress. I was essentially not finishing what I started and I was wasting a ton of energy and time. So I highly, highly encourage you and you do not have to be like an organizational fanatic. You do not have to like be a pro at time management. Just invest a few minutes of your time to make a decluttering game plan for your home. And by the way, if you're somebody that like struggles creating to-do lists or, you know, just the sheer mention of me saying, hey, create a little decluttering plan, you're like, oh my God, Margo, like anxiety galore. I actually host live workshops. They're free every two weeks where I teach you live how to create your personalized decluttering plan for your home. I'll leave a link to the free workshop in the show notes. The next thing, if you want to see results faster, right? So this is how we work smarter, not harder. So if you want to see an instant transformation of your home, toss the large items first. The mattress up against the wall in the spare bedroom, the random chairs scattered amidst your living room that no one sits on. Heck, even the coffee table that serves no purpose other than to attract the mail and other paper clutter. So funny story. A few years ago, I had a coffee table in my living room and full transparency, it was a magnet for surface clutter. Papers, cups, plates, knickknacks, and under random stuff. Literally a dumping ground for miscellaneous items. I was so frustrated. (laughs) I felt like I was cleaning this thing like multiple times a day. It was driving me absolutely nuts. So here was my solution. You ready? I decluttered the coffee table. I donated it. I have not had a coffee table since, and I have eliminated the problem of having surface clutter in the middle of my living room. Now, I'm not saying you have to go that atomic, but what I'm saying is that decluttering, starting with decluttering large pieces of furniture really works and has a huge impact on your space. Way number three, that you can cheat the decluttering system is to declutter one to five items every single day. Okay, bear with me. So Many people seriously undervalue the power of decluttering one to five items a day. It's the mindset of decluttering has to be this commitment of time, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 
And yes, to see larger results, that is absolutely true. But most of us can't commit to decluttering 30 minutes daily. What we can do is commit to tossing one to five random items a day. So just so you know, okay, putting it, driving the point home, putting it in perspective, one item a day is 365 items a year. If you multiply that by five, you get, if I did my math correctly, 1,825 items. So if you do five items a day, you will be decluttering over 1,800 items in a year. Like, how bonkers is that? Now, these one to five items are literally simple, no-brainer tosses. You're like randomly flying through the living room and you see, you know, a candle on the shelf that has burnt out. Why do you need it? Get rid of it, right? So when we say, when I say one to five items, these have to be easy tosses. It, it, these are not sentimental items. These are not in case of emergency items. These are not items you have to think about at length. This is like, hey, here's this piece of paper in my office. Instead of putting it like on your desk or on a bin or in a drawer, like toss it. There you go. Boom. One item. You can take five pieces of paper and those are your five items for the day. Moving on, 15 to 30 minutes of focused, intentional decluttering produces results. My hope is that you invested the time to create a to-do list or create a little decluttering plan or maybe join the workshop. (laughs) So if you stick to your schedule and you actually declutter consistently in 15 to 30 minute increments, I mean, choose whatever number works for you. Maybe you are, you know, you love the number 18, go with 18, doesn't matter. As long as you are consistent, this will produce more results than sporadically doing an hour whenever you feel like it. Now, this works. I have had dozens upon dozens of clients, and I can tell you that 15 to 30 minutes of focused, uninterrupted, right, decluttering produces a ton of results. This is the true essence of smarter, not harder. No marathons, just consistent sprints. I encourage you to set a timer. Having an end in sight makes the process a more enjoyable experience. And most likely, you're going to go over your set time, okay? Many people I work with are like, Margo, I set the timer for 15 minutes, but I did 40 minutes. I'm like, fantastic. The beauty of setting a timer is that if you nail your like 15 minutes, whatever your goal is, right? If you do it, that's a win. If you go over, then that's a bonus and you feel good about yourself. So set timers, create a schedule, pencil it in, stick with it. So I have one more work smarter, not harder tip. And then I actually have a bonus tip. (laughs) And some of you hearing the bonus tip will be like, I think she's a little nuts, (laughs) but it works. So it might not work for everybody, but I find it to be incredibly effective. Okay. So number five, get others to help. So the more hands on deck, obviously, the faster it moves, right? It, it naturally will take longer if you are the only one who's doing it. And there are some cases where, unfortunately, the reality is we are the only ones doing it, right? And it's frustrating and we're tired and our back hurts and our leg hurts and maybe we pulled a muscle. Um, but the more hands on deck, the faster you're going to be able to eliminate clutter from your home. So maybe you want to bribe your children <laughs> or your partner, right? I don't know. Do whatever you can. But if more people are helping you, right, to transform your home and your space, you are working smarter, not harder. If those in your home are unwilling to help you, at least invest in an accountability partner who helps keep you on track and motivate you to keep going. This could be a friend. This could be a neighbor. This could be your mama. This can even be somebody that you, you know, paired up with in our free Facebook group called Declutter Your Life. Or you can always hire a home organization and decluttering coach like me for motivation and support. Or if you live in the tri-state area, I can actually come to your home and do it for you with you. For more information on how we can work together, you You can check out the link in the show notes. I'm actually having a crazy sale right now for your first month of us working together. All right, on to the fun bonus tip. Get angry at your clutter. I'm gonna say it again. (laughs) Get angry at your clutter. 
So to achieve a clutter-free home, the most important thing is commitment. What ends up happening is, right, the reality is that we are committed one day and not so much the next, right? Maybe we get like super hyped. Maybe, you know, you made a New Year's resolution and we all know how well those work out. You made a New Year's resolution. You're like, this is the year that I'm going to declutter my house. And like two weeks in, you've lost motivation or finding yourself procrastinating, getting distracted. And I'm like, I couldn't declutter today because I was running errands. What can help kind of redirect you is to get angry at your stuff, to get angry at your clutter, get fired up, get ruthless, go atomic, right? Go atomic on that shirt that reminds you of the smaller size you used to be. Get angry at the money you spent on that Lancome product you never used. Get pissed at that bullet you have sitting on your kitchen counter, never having made those healthy smoothies. Maybe that was just me. So sometimes it helps to give you that motivation and kind of that push, right, to redirect your attention back onto your home. Um, I don't know. Try getting angry a little bit at your stuff, right, and how it's making you feel and how it's making your home look. You know, oftentimes kind of repositioning that and thinking about like how it's negatively impacting you will help you purge faster and more consistently. So I hope this podcast episode inspired you. I hope... I hope you're fired up to declutter your home. As always, thank you so much for listening. Good luck on your decluttering journey and remember to be good to yourself.